Hi everyone, in this part of the series for string manipulation, we are going to learn these two items. So if you're interested in learning these, please continue watching. Alright, welcome back. So the first item for today is to search in a list of haystacks or search a list of needles. This may not make sense to you straight away. However, if you take a look at the title of the official documentation on the AutoArchy website, you might get even more confused because this is what it says. If var or not in slash contains value one and two. So basically what's happening here is that there are two sets of things you have. If var in match list or if var not in match list and if var contains match list or if var not contains match list. The gist of the difference between these two is that the first one checks if the value in var shows up in any of the items in the list of items or not. Whereas the second one checks if the var contains any of the items in the list of items and the match for the second one can be a substring as well it can be a partial match as well i'll go into that a little later when i explain you the second one so let me first start with the first one and here is a basic example here we go so the var is going to be a variable that i'm going to assign a string value of cu and the if statement is going to use that variable as a needle to search in any of these four list items. So the list items are separated by a comma. And if there's a match, and mind you, it has to be an exact match. And there is a match here. So what this is going to do is going to show me, it's going to show me a message box that says, see you, the var is in the list, right? So this is how you use it. Now, like I said, it requires an exact match, which means if you have var as cu, but you have long lines of strings like that, separated by a comma, what this is going to do is it's going to look for an exact match of cu. So if I run this, it's not going to work. So I just ran it, but it hasn't found a match, so it hasn't shown me the message box. I can put in an else statement and put a message box that says not found and if I run it, I'll get a message box that says not found. Now, if I add the rest of the string, see you soon my friend, this is going to work and this is case insensitive. If you want to turn on the case sensitivity, then you can use string case sense on, uh, but by default, the case sensitivity is turned off. So if I go ahead and run this, I will get the message box that gives me the var, the value in the variable. All right and uh, if you want if you want to search for a needle that contains the comma when the comma is the delimiter for separating out the items in the list of items what you can do is you can put two commas to mean the literal comma to escape the comma so this is going to work. So if I go ahead and run this, I will get cu comma is in the list. So if I take out, say, uh, one of the commas and run it, I'm not going to get any message boxes like that. All right. And you can also obviously use a variable for the match list as well. So this list can be turned into a variable. So I've got an example here. So the var is going to be by. And then the match list is going to have the list of items separated by comma. So if I go ahead and run it, it will determine that by is in the list. You can also use multiple matches, multiple match lists, more like. So you've got a match list one, two, three that contains all these strings. And then set the var as later. And we'll check if this var later is in any of these match list one, two, three. And it's going to show up the var if there's a match in a message box like that. And then it's going to perform another search of CU in the three lists. And then it displays a message box. So CU is here and later is right here. So it's both going to show up a message box. So later is in the list and CU is in the list. Okay. 
So that's uh, about it for the searching in the list of haystacks. So let's move on to the contains operator. So the way the contains operator works is it looks to check whether the var contains any of the items that you feed in. So list of needles. So consider these two to be needles. And if I give the var variable a value of 23, this if statement, if var contains, will check if this var contains either a number of one or three. And it does, there's a three here. So this is going to show this message box. So if I go ahead and run it, I'll get the message box. So if I change this to four, this is not going to satisfy. And I can put in a message box that says not found as well. So if I run this, it will say not found, right? Obviously you can use this for um, text values as well. So again, I've got see you later as the value that goes into my var variable. And then I'm going to check whether this string contains hello, bye, see you, or next time. And like I said, this can be a partial match. So any of these list items can be a substring of the, the variable here. So we're doing a search of these needles inside this variable. So this CU is a partial match of the variable. So this is going to show me the message box successfully. Even though this CU is not a full match of see you later. Okay. And so this if function can be used to check user input, for example. So here I've got an input box. So if I run it, it will ask me to enter either yes or no. So let's say I go um, and type out maybe, which is not a yes or no. If I go ahead and press OK, it's going to run the if statement and check if the user input is not in yes or no. If it is not in yes or no, which is the case because I put in maybe, you're showing me this message box that says your input is not valid. All right. So this is it for the search in a list of haystacks or search a list of needles. So let's move on to the sort function or the sort command. So the sort command has a syntax that looks like this. So it starts with sort, var name, var name is the variable that contains the list of items that you want to sort. And then the options are the options that I'm going to show you. So the basic sorting example includes this. So we've got a sort without any options. So the second parameter is missing here. And then also I'm going to do a sort using case sensitivity. So what that means is I'm going to sort this list of items and the sorting is based off of line breaks as default. So these four items will be treated as four separate items. So if I go ahead and run it, it's first going to sort these four items and display the result in my message box. So Ave, Jack, John, and Peter have been sorted correctly in alphabetical order starting from A to finish at Z. Now the next message box is going to give me the case sensitive sorting, which means now John, notice how John has a small letter J to that it starts with, uh, which means this is going to be put to the last because K sensitivity by default starts with the capital letters and then moves on to sorting the small letters. So if I go ahead and press OK, it's going to put John last. So Ave, Jack, Peter, and then John because the small letters come after the capital letters misspelled this sensitive. Now, if you want to do a reverse order, so now I've got capital sensitivity and then also an R which represents reverse order. So this is how you provide uh, multiple options. You separate the options with a space. So if I go ahead and run this, what's going to happen is before it prioritized the capital letters, now because I'm sorting in the reverse order, it's prioritizing the uh, small letters first and then it starts from Z capital letter to 
uh, capital letter A. So you see the reverse of the order that we've seen before. So the next option we have is using a different delimiter other than the line break. I'll give you an example. The option starts with a D and then X is going to be the new delimiter. Uh, like I said, the default is line feed and use, by using this DX option, you're able to change the delimiter to something else. So within this first variable, my variable, we're going to have the same list of strings. And within the my variable two, we're going to have the same items separated out by comma. And if I do a sort of my var, which is the first variable, by d comma, it's not going to sort anything because the items are separated by line breaks. Whereas the second one is going to sort perfectly because it recognized that comma is being used as the delimiter because I provided that option. So I've got Ave, Jack, John, Peter as expected. Now, if you want to do a numeric sort, this is the way to do the numeric sort. You provide an option called N. Now I've got an option example here which doesn't use that N option and it uses just the comma as the delimiter. So if I go ahead and run this, what I'm gonna get is one, 220 and 30. And that's because even though 30 is smaller than 220, because 220 starts with the number two, it's doing an alphabetical sort. So one, two, two, and then three, right? This is not doing a numerical sort. The next one, which has the N option, is going to do the numerical sort. So if I press OK, it's going to show me a new message box that sorts the numbers from the smallest to the largest. If you want to do largest to smallest, you obviously put a space and then R as reverse. So you get 220, 30, then one, right? And then if you want to sort for whatever reason, if you want to sort by the second character within each item instead of the first one, then you use the P option followed by a number that represents the nth position of the character that you want to perform the sort by. So if I run this, I get instead of A at tab, I get Jack first because the second character within Jack is A and then and then Abe because the second character within Abe is B and so on and so forth. You can also do a random sort like this. So every time I run the message box, I will get different results like that. If you want to remove duplicates, the sort command also can remove duplicates. So what we've got here is we've got U, which is the option to remove the duplicates. And then delimiter is going to be comma. And it's going to do a reverse sort. And P2 is that I want to use the second character as the element for sorting. And then C is case sensitive. So if I go ahead and run this, I'll get, um, I had two A's and three Peters, all the duplicates are gone. And then it did the sorting as per the options that I have provided. And second, lastly, we have this one. So this backslash, what it's going to do is it's going to sort the items based on the substring that follows the last backlash, which means it's going to perform the search based on these strings, right? It's not going to sort from here, from the beginning. It's going to sort from the last backlash. So if I go ahead and run it, I'll get abc.executable file first, and then that came, a x y z came, and then def.txt. Okay, and lastly, if you have files copied to clipboard from a folder, then using this method will sort the path of the files that you have copied. You lose the references to the files, but you get the paths of the files in your clipboard. So what this is going to do is, let me just go um, open up the folder where this script is saved. So if I highlight these files and perform a copy, 
and do a control V to paste it, I get copies of these files, right? Let me copy them again. But if you use this method where you put the clipboard into my variable and you sort that, what it's going to do is it's going to display the paths to the files and sort them in accordance with the options that I have given it. Alright, this is it for today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.